Thanks a lot for this introduction. I'm very happy to be here. And I'm very happy that I can present our work here as well. Uh, Mrs. Wolfein mentioned it already. Until 2019, I worked on the laboratory in Heidelberg. And now I am still have two science living, uh, working there on full time. And we um, started a um, startup um, focused on the um, antibody research, and it's still located in Heidelberg. And then in the images below, you see the campus of Lausanne of the University on, on Lausanne. I have a group at um, engineering and in the in the clinic at Lausanne where we have access to other research groups and um, samples of patients. What are we doing exactly in our laboratory? We are developing microfluid technology. That means that we try to smaller the samples and have a smaller volume and a smaller scale. We are um, designing software chips and apply this new technology on different areas of the biomedical uh, research. We are looking for new antibodies and on the other hand we are developing other um, approaches in the cancer therapy and in other areas we are also active but I will not mention them now. So getting smaller is one of the most important drivers of the technology. You see on the left side the, one of the first computer, a very very big machine, 40 tons and to have a well, a very, very small potential in comparison to the computer we have to ha today. In the 60s, we had got the printed circuit boards, and now we have got micro machines that have got really more potential than the big uh, computer of the 40s. In the biomedical research, we have also this. Um, effect, maybe on a scale uh, of mini mi miniaturization that is not the same. We have got the classical, um, the classical tube, and then we had got the plates, the micro tita plates, where we we have 96 assays that we could uh, perform parallel, and then we have got also a minimization. Um, with little droplets that cannot be seen by the eye, and there you can um, perform biomedical assays. On the left, you see individual human cells um, in these little droplets, and this is slow motion. We are generating thousands of test samples uh, per second. On, on, and you see we can collect the samples and in each droplet we have got another or different biological assay and concerning that we have got hundreds of thousands of test samples. These volumes, this small volume, allows us to use material that's not available in high volume. Imagine a biopsy, and in a normal, uh, well, a normal procedure, you cannot have thousands of samples. But with this tec technology, it is possible. You see that this format can be performed on individual cells as well. So one application that we are researching is the screening, uh, looking for therapeutic antibodies. We know that the immunological system is doing great things, that we are generating millions of antibodies, and these antibodies could be a very good medication against cancer or pathology or virus, bacteria, and every cell plasma cell is producing also another antibody. How can I find this antibody that has exactly these, um, well, these um, properties that we need? 
So we are looking for the needle in a haystack. What we are doing is that we have got animals that have been immunized or human beings. We are uh, getting plasma cells from that. We are passing them to a microfluid chip where individuals chip uh, cells are uh, covered in little droplets and additionally these drops um, that are required for a light to, to create a light so this means for instance uh, to show a cancer cell and with this assay format we can create hundred thousand of antibodies and test them so the advantages are pretty clear. Of course, we have got a throughput. We have got um, thousands times more antibodies and screen them. We can select them and we can bond them on a pathogen, pathogen or, for instance, kill cancer cells. The screens are very quick. So these are just a couple of hours in comparison to the traditional system. We have got a very high reduction of costs because we have got these small volumes and even with these difficult drug targets this means membrane receptors which are normally very difficult to treat we can use our technology these uh, advantages this pairing we used it to um, launch a startup we started very small we had got two uh, postdoctorates in at my laboratory and they presented a business concept and they had got in at the Apple Emble in my laboratory um, their office and their laboratories after that we moved on the right side uh, to this building we have got Three, we have three successful investment rounds. Uh, we have got our um, um, employees and our own un antibody development and our own offices and laboratories. But now I would like to talk about the uh, personalized cancer therapy. First of all, I would like to sum up why it is so difficult to cure cancer. First of all, the immunological system cannot recognize which is a human cell and which is a cancer cell. This means also that synthetical medication um, is it very difficult to kill specifically cancer cell. With a virus or bacteria it's easier because they have got another um, another construction so the human it is very difficult to create medication that has to fight a human body which doesn't endanger a human by itself so we know that every cancer is heterogene and it's developed very individual on each patient that means that we have got 19 million uh, cancer diagnosis and 10 millions of deaths. This means 1.5 um, trillion, sorry, trillion of, cancer, uh, of costs. Now you can see a slide of the MDA's cancer center and that serves to explain personalized cancer therapy. At the beginning of a diagnosis, a, a patient is just a grave figure. We do not know what's wrong. And what we call cancer is just um, um, a general name for a lot of diseases. We need tools to analyze every patient and give him a color, him, him or her color. So uh, the red patient needs the red medication and the green one, the green one, etc. And if I change the medication, they do not have the same effect. So another idea is uh, the combinated therapy. We know if I apply several medication at the same time, I'm um, raising up uh, the success. The, so, for example, HIV. It's a very species that is, has a lot of mutation at the beginning. When, uh, while we tried to treat HIV with monotherapy, there were immediately resistance. But with a combinated therapy, 
HIV patients are not developing the disease AIDS. So if this has been successful um, against this virus, why shouldn't this work against uh, the cancer as well? So why are we using microfluidic? This helps to do screens on little samples. You can see that on uh, the biopsy, you gen we generate little droplets with different assays, and we have got a very high throughput and uh, automation process. So, we have got livid tumor biopsy, pr and you see a test tube with a medium, and the laboratory, we pass this sample to a suspension, where we have got a lot of cancer cells from the patients. Then we developed a chip that develops little droplets and combines these with the um, cells, the cancer cells, and gives a light signal in the moment that we have got the effective substance against this the cancer. So the medication against in this droplet is really efficient for this patient. What you can see at this uh, slide, you can see data co collected from mice uh, with uh, human cancer, human tumors. You see a pancreas tumor. And the y x, you see the volume. So this means the size of the tumor and uh, the days, the time on the x axis. And you can see how uh, the uh, tumor is grown with different treatment. Blue, you see the vehicle. This is a placebo, and you see that the tumor are growing quickly. Green, you see mice that are um, treated with gemcitabine. Uh, the tumor is growing less uh, than with a placebo. In violet, you see a medication combination that could be identified with our platform. and. You cannot appreciate any growth. That means that the mice are relatively sane and do not develop a cancer. In the lower panel, you see the heat mats of the four different patients. We have analyzed their cancer cell. And if you see a red dot, you see a medication combination that has been very eff efficient on this patient. And this slide, for me, it's, it's very important to see. We have got four different patients, and uh, the pattern is very different. This means that we do not have uh, one unique therapy. And if you're looking further to the details, the standard therapy has been not read. And so this means that for every patient, we have got a different um, medication combination that has been effective. So a lot of has been published already in 2018. Since then, we have done a lot of work. And how will be the future? We have got um, raising up um, the improvement of his essays. So it's with a different number of cancer cells. We cannot control that. We cannot control we want one droplet with 37 cells. But if you want to have approximately 37 cells, in one droplet we have 33, and in the next one 40. But the light signal is showing me if this cancer cell has been killed precisely. This could lead to misinterpretation. The right droplet is maybe greener than the link left one. This means that the medication must be stronger. This is not correct. So what we have done, to, we have developed and patented an assay which in red, another color of the light, gives us an idea how many cells are in each droplet. And so we can establish a relationship of the signal. We, maybe we have got also a high signal because got, we have got a lot of cells in one droplet or because we have got a very efficient medication combination. 
And then we introduced a number of very comprehensive controls. I don't want to go too much into detail, but what we have done is that each medication that we ever test in the droplet, we also um, combine with an enzyme which produces a light signal or with an inhibitor which is normally generated by cancer cells. And since we do that with every medication, we can see if this medication does do what we want it to do and if our setup is robust over time. And that then we put together in a formula, uh, but we get a mathematical figure which tells us how well a therapy has worked. It's not that we have a combination that is especially good or uh, what I mean is are we statistically absolutely clean and is it significant. And with this uh, figure we have the indication that this is a clear data set and that can be used for clinical use. Now, we normally have two different approaches. So we take mice, like in the slide before, in which we have human tumors. And then we take these and we screen the cancer cells with different combinations. And then we apply the best possible medication combination and see if the cancer cells uh, become smaller or even um, are being reduced. So we get contour material from the hospital, we screen in our system, and in our system we include the standard therapy which uh, will then be used in the hospital independent of our measurement. So in other words, is the finding that we had, does it, does it uh, reflect the clinical study? And then we compare these two data. So with the mice, we step one step back. So we took mice to see if uh, they uh, reacted. And on the right-hand side, you have the data from our predictive system. So in the upper panel, we have a mouse which uh, reacted very well to cetuximab. Uh, you see the, the cancer cells in the red curve don't grow at all, hardly at all. And that means that this combination works well. And in the lower panel, we have uh, a PDX model with reduced cetuximab sensitivity. And then you see uh, that it actually uh, is in keeping with the curve. So the best hit, the best combination, we I identified uh, this particular um, in, in the vivo drug response, we, we, we see that it is in keeping with our prediction. And if we take a medication or a combination of which it is known that it is not very effective, we get very low and very dark data points. So it's a low incidence. So, as we shown in the earlier slides, we took mice where we analyzed the tumors and then realized what is shown in microfluidics as the best combination and then we see a correlation with the in vivo data. And then, in retrospective studies, we took tumor material from patients, inclusive of the therapy that uh, the patient received. And as you see in the upper uh, left corner, the responder, um, in, in the flu fluidics had a very good uh, response and there was no tumor relapse. With the other three patients, 
Therapie, die in der Mikrobiotik getestet wurde, that, uh, those um, keine große Wirksamkeit zeigt. That, that were tested and those that were used don't show so much of a response. But you see, maybe there is a trend, even though if it's a very small study. So for the first time, um, we show data that we only obtained this week. This is a patient that has a tumor of unknown origin. And he, that patient then received the 5-FU treatment in yellow. And this first-line uh, treatment didn't work at all. And then we took, got further tumor material. And then we saw the cisplatin combination uh, seems in seluximab may be much better. So in the yellow one, we could have said up front, this is something that will not help at all and it will only give the patient side effects. So then it was actually used in the clinic and I would like to show you data uh, from that patient prior to the use uh, of the medication. So the tumors are uh, have, have a good blood flow. In other words, they are completely active. After three months, you see that the tumors are not very light. In other words, they do not uh, have much blood um, activity. They're not vital. They're not dead yet, but they're not as vital as before. And you get similar results if you look at the form page. So the first line therapy was unsuccessful and you see um, you have uh, belly water with the patient. So after our therapy, this belly water is been, is removed. I mean, don't get your hopes up high. Uh, this was the first patient. We just got the data. Um, it may be pure chance, but I think there's a trend that in the clinical outcome, uh, this is uh, what we had. So what we can, can we do with it? Well, we'd like to have the system in the clinic. Um, so we think we should have it in diagnostic tests in which um, I mean, that is something that has been around, but sometimes they cannot test 50 or 100 different therapies and then choose up front which one would have the best result. But uh, for that, you also need a good knowledge of uh, biomarkers. And then you see which one would have a possible positive outcome. But you can also measure the... Uh, success by counting circular tumor cells. For that, you don't even need biomarkers, but only for the therapy that you're currently running. So you can't say uh, uh, therapy number 37 is the best. No, you can only say the one that is being put to use at the moment either works or it doesn't work. So maybe uh, there is a lot of side effects because of chemotherapy, but at the same time, the chemotherapy is not working at all. We don't need any previous knowledge, and we test it directly on the patient's material. So this is an investor's conference. I think it's right to say the companion diagnostic tests are around. They have been taken over by Roche. And there have been offers for a takeover for more than three billion. Now, how can we actually change that into a startup? Not only to make money, but also to accelerate these developments so that it comes out of the labs and gets into um, the practical utilization. So you need uh, the diagnosis, you um, have to have industrial technology, the demonstration of patient benefit, and you have to have a business model, and you have to have a future vision. I should like to share our future vision with you. What you see in the video on the left-hand side, there you see this channel that is being closed, and it, it's a technology that works. But the microchip 
steps have to be uh, right on top um, of the slit and the diameter is just about uh, five millimeters and if you have so many of these um, pins that have to be right in the same position you know in an academic environment is not a problem if it doesn't work I repeat it and then I put it one more time but in clinical uh, use it has to work immediately not only after many attempts. So, we tried um, 3D printers with a high resolution, so the center, uh, to, to, to put it right into the center, uh, is done by hand, and also the plastic chips um, are ready for mass production. And then we have the two valves, so it can be sent from left to right or from right to left. Uh, this is from a corporation with a group in the States, and it shows a way how this can be manufactured for mass use. On the left side you see the former uh, technology and on the right side you see what it looks like now. And as you see this is getting very much slower, each, uh, faster each time and smaller. So we now have a company that uh, manufactures uh, these uh, chips for massive use and uh, these are plastic chips with valves that can be used. So what you see here is the design for our, for our uh, therapy approach. And I'm told that at the end of the month we'll have it in our lab. And of course we need clinical studies. I don't want to get too much into it, but we have uh, cooperation at the clinic in Lausanne, but uh, we're planning on a major clinical study with more than 100, um, 20 cancer patients, and this will be carried out at centers in and clinics in Holland and in Germany. What's our business model? We have a patient who uh, provides a bio, bio, biopsy and that is being tested. And uh, then you pay money to a diagnostics lab. Uh, we don't do that. We only provide the machinery to the lab. And then they have to uh, generate a sales volume. So the diagnostics lab then takes or keeps 30 uh, percent, the rest goes back to the startup. And there's another advantage. Diagnostics labs can certify new instruments themselves. We are not allowed to do that. We would uh, need to obtain that. And it's all scalable because we only get the anonymized data and then make a recommendation for the therapy. So we can do it for a hundred or for a thousand patients. And this is a great resource for uh, getting diagnostic markers certified. One of our future visions is the glass patient, completely transparent. So we, um, back in 2018, we published uh, uh, the combination uh, product and for now, uh, we get the entire transcriptome of the patient. So we don't only see do they die or do they not die, but we see all of the uh, signal paths that are relevant for cancer. So if there are uh, resistances, we can explain why that occurs. And another future vision is uh, what I call system diagnostics. So, we screen these uh, cells, a tumor, I mean, it's a piece of tissue, it's not um, uh, just a, uh, a bunch of uh, tumor cells. And so we, we cut the tissue and then the tumor architecture will remain intact. So you see the vessels, uh, immune cells and so on. 
and then we can carry out the same tests as before. And finally, I'd like to share with you the future vision for fighting resistances. Resistances have to be tested and then you develop alternative therapy before the patient actually falls sick. So we get a biopsy. We use part of that sample to carry out our test to see this and that medication combination would be perfect for this patient. But we also take the material from the patient uh, to uh, create miniature tumors and we treat these tumors with higher concentration of uh, the best medication combination. So, if they have a resistance to the medication combination and if they're at that time point, we take the next test. So even if the best combination drug doesn't work anymore, then we look at what is an alternative therapy. And it could be that we know it uh, before uh, the patient even has any kind of resistance. With this, I should like to conclude my presentation means we have got a new technology for personalized therapy. We have got a portfolio for a patent and we have got a public research support of more than 3 million euro and we want to fund a company in 2021 and we have got a clinical prospective study for next year. So uh, thanks to everybody who has been involved in these um, experiments and all the other members of our consortium. We have got informatic and uh, doctors. So thanks a lot for listening to me and if you are near the Lake of Genf, please come around and I will show you our lab. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thanks a lot, Dr. Merton. And again, we can see that there's happening a lot already since the last time that we met here. And up to today, not only the company, also the number of employees. You can um, have results and can match. This is great. Just one day before the conference. <laughs> well, this was a little bit of luck. This um, is a work of a lot of people. It's not only my group. There are also ideas of different uh, colleagues from Aachen and Netherlands that apply this technology. The case of the tumor where the tumor isn't, uh, isn't known because the, we do not know nothing about the tumor and how to treat this tumor. So this was really a very good chance for us to work. So still we are on this randomized representation how our um, technology is working. We need a study, a, a long-term study and a big study, but with the data we already have, we can see a tendency and a certain uh, correlation and how uh, the statistic is, we, can, we have to determine still, but there is a correlation. So how do you feel right now? For me, it's great because I was very happy when I saw the, da the patient data because a lot of things could go wrong. Imagine that the patient has received the medication and there was no uh, success and only side effect. This for me wouldn't have been nice. Um, and when we see that there's a success at the patient, a patient that is already on second line treatment, then it is a great feeling. It's a good notice for the, for the patient. And the doctor told me that the second line therapy would be very, not probable, so under 10% of probability. So maybe we have been lucky, but I think it, it fits very well. So a lot of questions around here is fascinating. Thanks for presenting that. When will the procedure be uh, capable for using it in Mars? Well, I, I think soon, of course. We need some time, but with the startup you can accelerate this process. I want, don't, do not want to be too optimistic, but still technology in selected labs uh, is possible. 
It's not worldwide portable. I don't, do not expect that, but maybe in the next years. This means less than five years. Oh, amazing. And there's more. So capable for masses. So everybody can have it or is it a very expensive treatment? No, I will be, be very specific about that. There are a lot of approaches for a personalized um, therapy, but it's a lot of concepts that are convincing but need a lot of money, hundreds of thousands of, of euros per patient. In our laboratory lab, there's nothing costs optimized. We are not looking at the costs in general. Per patient, we have got costs under 150 euros. Just a comparison, uh, uh, we have got MRT treatments that are more than 1,000 euros. And we have got a result in within 24 hours. This means we can adapt very quickly the therapy. So we do not have three months to wait for an answer. So concerning the costs and the time, we are in a very good and compatible uh, system. So I think this is not uh, for the elite. So you were talking about uh, different um, type of um, medication. So we have radiation, chemotherapy, therapy, etc. So radiation, we cannot test them. We don't have an equipment where we can irradiate uh, the cancer cell. But what we can do is we can test every therapy that attacks directly the cancer cell. This means not immune cells. Immunological therapy seems to be promising. If we could look at the transcriptum of the cells, then we can see what the immunologic cells are doing. This means that this step we already are, we are already doing. And we have got a lot of uh, information gathered by this step. And so the next generation we are starting now, we can include the, all this information and have a further look if there are some checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, we could not follow up if uh, immunology th therapy is effective or not, but what we can see if this is a genetic makeup of the uh, patient um, suitable, suitable to certain therapy. So we can have a look good feedback. If you find biomarkers that characterize the cancer, we are talking of different technologies, these little plates uh, where you introduce the samples. You have cancer 23B, so we have got a medication, we have tested it several times, then you don't need the tests exactly, but this is not a competition. In this business or uh, range of research, we want to be active. We have got the transcriptum of hundreds of thousands of patients, and we have a further look at this transcriptum uh, while treating or after treating the cells with hundreds of different combinations of medication. Then it is very probable that we recognize certain biomarkers, and then <clears throat> we know exactly which medication combination is very good, for instance, A2. If I see another biomarker, then Z5 is very efficient. So we are multiplex. We see a lot of par um, treatment options in a parallel manner. We can say that uh, the medication X is not working fine and that um, and that cancer, but combination uh, to another um, substances, it could cause sensitivity at the patient. So it's not a competition, it's just a flow, a data flow, and with this individual bio data, we can prioritize one combination over another. This would be a perfect result, a perfect outcome, and this was, would be really a good synergy. We saw the triangles with this combination, but there are hundreds of medications, so you need thousands of combinations, yes and no. For each cancer, 
We do not have uh, that many combinations, even though with the uh, clinical studies we have to test less combination than technical possible, but we can scale this up. I th don't think that we have 100 per 100 thousand thousands. I don't think we have 10,000 uh, therapy options for one cancer, but the better the system works, the, be the better we have the chance to test additional medication, always medication that are accepted for certain diseases. So really medication that are tested and sampled on, on human beings. So um, HIV could be healed, is it correct? Well, healed is not the correct term. HIV have the highly active therapy. This is a cocktail against HIV. When these patients you, uh, take in this uh, treatment, the compliance is very low. There are patients that receive these treatments. Um, so the combination therapy has revolutionized um, <clears throat> the treatment of HIV, and this works 100%. Not to heal the patient, it's nearly impossible to get this virus out of the body, but the the breakout of the disease um, is not taking place. So you have got a lot of money that's invested. You are right now, um, well, are there a lot of requirements concerning your startup? You don't want to push too much the startup. We need really good data in uh, correlation and s until then, I think we would sell us too cheap. We will work a little bit more and show that we have really a clinical usage. But what I see, we have got a lot of doctors that uh, want to try our um, our system. We have got a pension, for instance, that we do not know where the tumor comes from. So we do not want to start first investment round, but. Doctors and physicians are asking us. We have cancer patients that are asking me, we have, I have two tumors, please could you help me out? So right now we cannot help and this really hurts me. People notice that we are successful. Patients are not into a biomedical publication, but we had a very good feedback and from the diagnosis labs, we get a good uh, feedback. So that's happening right now. Are you um, establishing contacts, for instance, with Biontech? Maybe Biontech, I'm not phoning them regu on a regular basis. We have got a higher overlap with uh, the other startup that we have, where we are treating B cells and T cells. But anyway, we are open for anything. <laughs> so, whoever likes our synergy, we well, we are open to talks and to discussions. Sometimes you pre-adjusting maybe the path, so uh, we can adapt. Dr. Martin, thanks a lot. It's a very huge development. Thanks for everything you presented. It's amazing. So I'm very much looking forward the, for the next time when you're here at Akatis. And maybe you can give the better notices to your patients. Thanks a lot.